using the features of Streamlabs OBS, they decided to really piss me off and change things, and now it's forced changing the name of my stream, and uh, now I have to go back and, and re-edit all the freaking data that I already have saved set up in there. Uh, pissing me off. Anyway, um, if you watched the last video, which I'll have to rename and redo all over again, and I'll have to do it for this one as well, um, what we were doing was setting up a save game system, and you see my health is low right now. So if I come in here and run over the pain pad, reduce my health down, and if I just exit and replay, it's back to where it was before. But if I change that, let's drastically reduce it. This one is a save pad. Game saved. Now if I go back in here and play it again, see my health is still low where it was last time. So let's actually reduce it to zero, exit, replay the game, and it's working correctly the way it was supposed to. I don't see what I did wrong, but I just kind of changed a little bit to be more of what I needed. So now if I come over here and reduce it all the way and save my game again, exit, replay, and there we go. So, really quickly, I created a, a save pad, and I can just make another duplicate of this one, and we'll do heal pad, BP, go in here, and instead of substitute, or subtract rather, we will do addition. Float plus float, and we'll add 10. We don't have a health cap or anything else in here. Not the porpoise of this video. So now we got a healing pad, and I will move that to screw it right here. They all look alike wasn't really the purpose. So we have no health, so let's go ahead and raise our health back up. Alright, so we're full health. Let's save the game and exit. Now we come back in here to play. We're at full health. Let's go ahead and knock it down just a little bit. But we haven't saved our game yet. So if we exit and come back in, we're still at full health. So I'm going to go ahead and knock it down, show you that the save game is working. Game is saved. We exit, we come back in, and it's retained that information. All right, so essentially, we still have the same information here. One thing I forgot to do was click on this to make that public so that I could call that from other locations. So into your save game object, you need to, to do that. And the only other thing I did was I created a save game reference. So if I need to, I can call that anywhere. But I've created a new custom event. We'll get into that in just a minute. Our save game check we did before. All right, same thing before. We've got our save game name which was a variable that we already saved as default save. And then we ask, does save game exist? We go to our branch node. We're not running anything off of faults. Okay, so we're not, we're not forcing it to create a save game at this point. Um, we're gonna load game from slot like we did before using our save game name as our actual save game. One thing I didn't do was cast to. I didn't cast to that object. Um, so from there, I just dragged off from return value and cast to my default save game. I pulled up my variable, which was our SG, or save game health, and I set my player's health to what that, that information is. 
and then what I'll do is I'll hold that for here for just a moment so you can copy it down if you need to but it's exactly the same information we had before it's just done a little bit differently so I don't see what I was doing wrong uh, I think it was just Unreal Engine 4 just being a pain so save a game object is a custom event I created a custom event and to do that all you gotta do is just right click and type in custom and call your custom event whatever you want I do it that way so that I can call it from wherever I need to um, so it's asking does a save game exist what is the save game name that is a variable that I created so that I didn't have to keep typing it in all the freaking time and it's just called default, default underscore save call it whatever you want you can give it some funky variable name like 24 point seven or 24 a 37 or whatever so if anybody's digging through the game files and they see something it doesn't show up as saying hey this is your save game I can hack that or whatever but okay so we're asking does save game exist run our branch node and again we're connecting both of these across and if it does exist we're going to load game from slot using the same save game name here and then from load game from slot you drag off from here and cast to the default save game that we created earlier and we are going to get our save game health and set our players current health to this location every single attribute you want your player to have saved whenever that save game is there which I'll add in one more which will be our player location so that we can, we have one more thing that we can add in to save at that point um, we don't want them really standing on top of our save game pad so I guess what we could do is on the save game pad is teleport the player to wherever or whatever you know we just want that player to be that information to be saved so we can use location we can use um, our current amount of credits or whatever else I don't really want to do location because every time I start I want my player to start from the player start location the where I have my player start assigned because this is going to be from for me to use as a primary testing template for testing out the overall project and I usually want to start from the beginning now another thing we could do is since we want to be able to save the game information I created a separate save game custom event and what it's going to do is create a saved game object using our default save game I again I set that as a um, I drag off from here and promote to variable may not be necessary at this point in time but it will be later and then it's going to get what my current health is and set my current health and save that to the save game slot which is there and it's just gonna print right there saying game saved very simple but now I have a custom event that I can call anytime I need it and save the game so as a method of say function testing if I want to hit the the a certain key and save the game well do keyboard type in keyboard and you can see all these different um, options you can use for your keyboard I'm going to use function key 1 F1 if at any time you decide you want to change that without having to rewrite everything you can just go right to there and change it to whatever you want so when I press this what I want to do is I want to run my save game custom event and I want to print text game saved stupid so now when I hit the F1 key it's gonna save the game for me 
Because I've already created this save game custom event, I can now call it anywhere, anytime. In fact, that's how my save had, essentially, whenever I step on the pad, essentially it's, I'm intersecting with that box collision, I'm casting to my player, I'm running the save game, and I'm playing a click sound. So the same thing here, I could also do, um, I can make it play a click sound if I want to. I can just add that into the save game functionality. But what I want to do is, well, let's just go back in here and test things out. Save everything. We hit play. You see we already have lower health. Um, if I hit the F1 key, oh, probably not a good idea to do that. Um, <laughs> because that function key does something else too. Um, so for right now, let's go ahead and change that. Um, I'm going to assign that to the tilde. Which is... that key. Because I didn't really need to see wireframe. That's where I like the escape key for using that as my usual default for going back to the menu. Oh, well, that's not a good idea either. Um, can I have a key that doesn't do something else? Let's try the number one key. So now, no matter where I am, if I hit save, game save stupid, well, getting game saved and game save stupid because I already had the this put in there. So I'm going to take that one out and actually put that into um, here, print text. Game saved. Boy, thank you. So now, if I hit the one key, game save stupid. But if I come over here, it's going to do its own save game. And again, let's take some health away. And I'm going to come over here, hit save game. We're going to exit, and we're going to hit play again. See, it's using the player spawn point that I have already preset. You can see our health is where we left it at. So again, we can just take it down to nothing. And I'll walk over here, because I'm not saving my location. So I hit the one key, game saved. So now whenever I exit and come back in, I start from a normal spawn point, but my health is down to zero. So it's all working the way it's supposed to now. And it's not crashing every time I try to do anything. Yay. You can see now I can bring my health back up. Leave it a little bit low. Save game manually right there. And now when I go back into play, it's automatically saving it. Because I have it set to run the save game as a custom event. And the save game check is actually being run as I showed in the last video, but I'll, in my startup stuff is a custom event. I want to put all my startup stuff into one little string. It's calling that save game check. And from that, I'm not using touch input, but I'm not going to get rid of it. On event begin play, it's just running that custom event called startup stuff. So every time I start playing, it's going to automatically call up that save game and it's going to save that information and put us where we need to be. All because we ran our save game check on initial startup. So, again, if I want to set my location, I could always add in, in my player stats, I could do another custom event or, or a custom variable, and we're going to call this our location um current location. Why not? So our current location, we need to save that as a vector. 
compost and save and actually we need to make that our player stats so everything is kept neat and organized inside of our player stats area now we're gonna have to go back to our save game and inside here we need to add another variable called sg underscore location so we know that it is our location we need to make sure it's also a vector and that we expose it and you know who doesn't like exposing themselves I mean yeah right there so we have that on our save game make sure we hit compile and save and now that information is there so in our save game check I don't really want to keep this in here but I'll put it in here just to showcase what we're doing so whenever it actually loads the game we need to get and I'm gonna grab um, set current location All right, and then what I also need to do here to set this current location is whenever we're setting this information here we can grab this SG location yep get our save game location and we're gonna plug that in here so compile and save that and now in our save game when we actually save the game I need to add that information in here so I'm just gonna drag this out of the way we'll move it back here in just a minute so we need to get our current location all right so we know what our current location is at that moment and we have not set our current location yet so we need to when we hit save game we need to get our current location so I'm gonna grab a reference to my mesh and get world location so we get our current location of where we are now and what we need to do is we need to set our save game location so I'm gonna drag off from here set SG location drag that in here so now we can just connect here and here so we're setting our location based on what we got from our current player location all right so now we can just move this back now I don't usually like that for what I'm doing so I'm gonna end up getting rid of that so anytime I call this this location I'm gonna stand right here I'm gonna hit one and I'm gonna save my game now another thing I can do really quickly is add in a load game button I'll do that here in just a second so now I'm back over here we saved our game in that far corner so let's exit the game and play the game we need to go to roll location set so when we hit save game we want to set that location let me try something different here um, get actor location so let's run over here and we need to set that then what I'll do is I'll add in a load so we hit play again I didn't pull that location um, running save game health we're setting the save game location Yep, that should be fine.
because you're going to end up stacking a lot of different things inside here. Um, just for giggles here, let's um, just want to print that information out. I want to see if it actually is, is saving that information. Because I want to be right over here. It's got the information. So it'll save that information now. It knows that location. Oh. The um, reason why it's not is... It's setting my current location, but um, it's not actually telling me to start at that location. So we need to um, set actor location to that location. Duh. And it should be a teleport. Let's go ahead and add in the um, the load game. So essentially, when we're doing our save game check, we're already saving it. Um, but we're still going to need to have the same information here. So when I hit the number 2 key, so keyboard 2. Same basic concept we're going to have to do here is we need to check to see if the save game exists. Does save game exist? Our save game name. Now you can set this up to work any way you want to call the information to recall whenever you need to. So we've asked does a save game exist and we need our branch. Connect those in there. And if so, what we need is to do the same thing right here. Just wonder if there's any way that I could actually change that to where I'm gonna get rid of these two. I can simplify this information down even more. I'm sure that I could, but I'm not gonna. Um, just keep it simple, stupid for right now. So we're just when we're saving the game, I want to call this information. So. If it does exist, we want to load game from slot. And the slot name again is our save game. From there, we want to cast to that and now get our information. And we've got save game, we're saving that information. And hmm. okay, yeah, it's running that, that save game check. Um I'm also wondering if I can actually abbreviate this too. Just run um save game check. Just run this custom event instead of trying to write out the whole script all over again. Because we're we're doing the same thing. We're getting the same information here. You know, I'm just gonna write it out. Alright. So when we cast to it, we need to get our get SG health and location. And we need to set our health. to whatever it is that is. And here we're setting that as our current location so we can actually get um, our save game location 
and we can actually just go directly into set actor location to this location. We'll run teleport just to be on the safe side there. All right, so if we go in here and play, we are at our last known location when we saved it to our save game. So if I come over here now and hit F1 and save my game, if I come back over here and hit F2, it's loading the game. So let's go ahead and put in just some text just so we, we see that we are... No, print text. Loading in and game loaded monkey boy so when we hit our, our number two key so we are where we left ourselves let's go ahead and cause some pain and let's go ahead and save our game here no, let's go to a different location let's go to this corner over here and we're going to save game so game saved stupid now if we're running around like ah shit I screwed up I need to go back to my last save game hit F2 and game loaded monkey boy we're back in this corner again let's save in the corner so we're, we're going through and ah uh, crap you know I died uh, so now as part of your death script you can actually have it boop, reload you to your last known save location so you're calling that information wherever you need it, however you need it. Does that make sense? We'll save our game here. So we run around. Oh, let's go ahead and heal ourselves back up again. Yay, we're healing. We're healing. We're back to full health again. Great. So I'm going to come over here, stand in between it. I'm going to save my game. Now as I'm going around and suddenly... Yay, I'm doing dumb things. My player gets in a stupid way and like, oh, well, you know what? I'm dead. Let's reload the game. Hit F2, and there we go. Where it gets complicated is when you start adding more features into it. It's not complicated. It's simple. Everything is really simple if you break it down into its little components. We have now F2, bang, and do that. But now we have a save game function or custom event. We can call this anytime we want to save our game. Um, just like in here, we have our save pad. Let's go ahead and knock our health down. And we saved our game. Now what happens if I run over here and I hit F2, it starts me right back where I intersected with the save game again. So now you can save your game anywhere you want, any way you want. All right. So save game check. Well, when we hit our number two key, does save game exist? And how can we simplify that and call this from anywhere? Is we can actually create a custom event. Custom load save game we'll make this as a custom event and we're gonna break this we're gonna move our number two key out of the way we're we're still gonna have it we're still gonna use it but now we are loading our game with this custom event so now if I hit compile and save now whenever I hit the number two key load save game it's going to run that custom event so now if I ever want to do that I can actually come back over here and anytime I hit the number 2 key it's going to run this script now if I ever want to put um, a reference to this it's right there just like I did in the save pad all it's doing is whenever I cross that threshold, I step on that box collision, it's going to cast to the the player character. It's going to run that save game script. This is a save game executable. This right here is this. 
this whole line right here. It's running this event anytime I step on that pain pad or that um, save game pad. Now, save game pad, it doesn't have to be a pad, it could just be just a box collision. Your player crosses through a checkpoint, and as soon as they cross that checkpoint, it saves that information. So if the player then dies, it'll automatically reload back to that last location. So let's look at um, the option of if we die. What happens when we die? And I know I'm making a, a big mess here, but we'll clean all this stuff up later on. Since we have save game as a custom event and save game check as a custom event, um, load saved game, we could actually, right there, we could do on this, we could actually eliminate that by doing the save game check and just running this load save game or we could just get rid of this completely because we don't need it anymore we could actually then go into our startup and actually at the end here instead of save game check we could just run a load game so it can simplify the things that we we have in here so what I want to do is run a health check. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to instinctively go right for the event tick. And technically, yes, it'll work, but you don't want to run... If you're running 120 FPS on your game... Oh my god, I'm so excited! I wish I could What's happening, brother? Uh, thank you so much. So... You don't want to keep checking 120 times per second. You don't want to check every frame. So what we can do here is when we take a hit to our health, what we've done here is created our pain pad. In theory, once we set this to subtract our health, we can then actually put this into our pain causer. Whatever is... is you know, causing us pain. And another way we can do that as well is to eliminate the, the need for having that damn event tick. You know, it works, but it's just something we, we really need to avoid. So, just create another custom event. Custom events are freaking awesome. Um, damage... Or, let's see, what, what can we call it? We're, we're taking damage. Um, damage taken or received. Whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's much better names you can give that. To. Ouch, shit, that hurt. You can call it whatever you want for that custom event. So we want to run a custom event, and this is for a single player. Yeah, I'm trying to get back into swing of things with videos, and hell, I was trying to do this stream earlier, and UE4 crashed like five times, and I'm like, yeah, I had to just get out of the room and take a break for a little bit. <laughs> so every time we we receive damage, I want to run this custom event so that it actually checks something. So what I'll do is I'll get a reference to my health. I know that I'm need that. And I um, might also grab a set because I'm sure I'm going to need that too. Uh, I want to get a reference to my health and I want to check if my health is equal or less than or equal to zero. Alright, so let's throw a branch in there. So we're checking is our health equal to. Instead of running this in every single t time we need to do a health check, um, I mean, we could change this from damage received to death check, <laughs> whatever, you know. So we want to check to see if we're whatever damage was inflicted is going to kill us. So we check to see if our health is less than or equal to zero. Well, first off, we don't want it to go below zero. True, then 
I'm sorry, zero, 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 zero. Um, if it is equal to or less than zero, we need to set it to zero. We need that to happen every single solitary time we take damage. We need to see if we're at zero. And if we are at zero, we are dead. Plain and simple. So I'm going to run custom death. We need a death event. Okay. So let's go ahead and compost and save that rather quickly. And now we have death. We can actually run that here. Death. So if we're, if, if we're at or below zero, we're going to set it to zero, and then we're going to do whatever it is right here that we need to do for death. And for right now, I'm going to run a delay, because delays and functions don't work. That's why I like custom events. We're going to wait five seconds, and then we are going to... No, 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 what, what do we call it? Load save game. Load save game. So we can just run that custom event. So when we die, we're going to wait five seconds, and then we're going to load our save game, which is just going to return our health back to what it was when we saved our game and set our location back to the point where we saved it. And it's going to say game loaded monkey boy. So let's test that theory out. All right, so game was saved there. And, you know, we can heal ourselves back up, or we can go back over here and cause pain, take our health away. I'm actually going to come back over here to this corner. And we just completed a checkpoint, and we saved our game. I just hit the, F, the, the one key there. So now I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to do this. I forgot to, to put that in here. So, sorry. Um, in our pain pad... I quit being a dumbass. Um, <laughs> when we're doing all this, we need to come from our, our player base, and we need to run death check. We're going to run that in here so that we can check to see if that killed us or not. So it's going to run that script and check our health. And if if that was the 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 nail on our coffin that killed us, then that's what we need to do. All right, so our save game is right here. We're in in this corner. We got low health, so let's see if we actually can die. All right, so I didn't tell it to, like stop my player or anything like that. So see, it just automatically loaded us to there. Um, in death, let's first off, just so we know that we we are dead, and you know. Print text. I know print text and print strings do the same thing, but I'm putting text up. So you are dead, you moron. So it's going to print that. Hey, you're dead, moron. But we need to um, get our movement. Um, disable movement. Now, <laughs> here's the stupid thing is, um, since we're going to try to disable our movement, and that's probably not the right way of doing it, um, it's going to cause us to not be able to move as soon as we respawn. Um, <laughs> so I'm leaving out part of it just because I'm being brain dead. So we can't move. But as soon as we respawn, see, we're still doing our idle animation. We didn't tell it to do another animation. So we need to enable our movement. Since we disabled it, we got to re-enable it somehow. And see how much fun it is every time you add new things. We load save game. We need to do all this stuff right here. Do all this stuff right here, do all this stuff right here, and game loaded monkey boy. So we'll just grab reference to our character movement. 
and enable. Yeah, see, that would just be really, really convenient to, um, because we, here we use disable. Um, what is the one for, you would think it would be a simple thing of just saying enable. Bam. We're working. So instead, let's do it a little bit different here, because on Real Engine 4, and set movement mode to none so we don't have any movement at all and here we can set movement mode or learn how to type throw that in there and connect it in to walking but you notice something to play around with Flying, swimming, falling, other things that we can add in and play around, uh, play around with, but we're not going to get into that. So, we run around here, and let's change our save game location. I want to be over here. Now, we could also save our rotation and everything else, too, but um, instead of using a vector, we could have used a, a different variable type okay so our movement stopped we wait five seconds and then we respawn and we can move again so it's just a matter of how you want to trigger those things to get them to work it's super super easy you know this is stuff right here like to set the movement mode I don't have to put it there I can actually put it right here so let's actually go back in here and we can take this and this and get rid of it because we already have our delay set up here um, we can actually take this and set movement mode we're doing our delay of five seconds and then poof load our save game and we're good to go so you can just put it right there and it'll be just fine I hope all this is kinda of sinking in a little bit and, and you know, everybody kinda of follows along with it it's a lot simpler than what most people think so I still can't move and now poof I teleport and I no, nope, because I'm stupid walking thank you actually let's change that to three seconds I don't want to wait that long nobody wants to wait that long after they die before they can respawn so we'll go ahead and kill herself you are dead you boron and poof we teleported so let's go ahead and increase our health up here's the thing too is you know what if you wanted it every time I increase my health um, you know, can I have it save game? Save it there. Yes. Anytime, anywhere, any way you want to call it. Because we've done as a um, a key bind or stepping on a pressure plate. Game saved. You know, I mean, I saved it right there just then. So now, what happens if I come over here and because I didn't set a, a maximum cap on my health, it's going to be kind of screwy. So we're dead. Now if I respawn, back to full health, back to over here again. So, you know, I can get back over here and save it in this corner. It's this is just super easy. So let's go ahead and kill ourselves. I know I should have just increased the number of amount of, of damage done with this, but there we go. Respawn, we're back to full health, and we can keep on playing again. Set it as a checkpoint. I, I completed a checkpoint. You know, it's, um, you know, really simple. I don't have any assets loaded in here, so 
let's do blueprint actor um, checkpoint go in here I'm just gonna add in well you know what one thing I always do is I create a test map and I'm not doing that right now so let's do file new level VR basic I always always do this and I didn't do this I blame everybody not me so let's dump this stuff out of the way and let's go ahead and file should just do save all save selected and test this is not a map we'll ever see in our gameplay it's just a test map I also do build maps and things like that too but um, let's grab a geometry box um, let's make it details get bored and just play around with uh, BSV geometries at time my Y let's make it 300 Z, let's make it 300, and then location needs to be 150, and let's make it thinner. So I can see the X here is going this way. So let's change the X to 100, and add a second version in. Let's take the first one. Let's go zero zero. Number two, we'll do the same thing, zero and zero. But now let's change the dimensions of it to um, one hundred, two hundred. Half of that would be 100, and let's change it to subtractive. And I don't really have any. Well, let's do materials. I actually have materials. Huh? Dumbass. Uh, let's see here. We can select the face there. Element, but let's do select all adjacent blue but you don't see anything there we go same thing here select all adjacent blue so now we have asshole you were so stupid wow oh I know why um Here's what we got to do is because we're doing the save game stuff, we need to um, add in some functionality here. Um, shit, and fall back in it. Um, you know what? For now, let's just do. Um, that so when we play we're actually here so I don't have to mess with my save game for right now so all I've done is just create a little archway it are stupid I know but just needed something for testing we'll grab both of those together and come down here to brush settings do that create static mesh Go to my assets mesh. Ugly as um, CP underscore SM. Ugly as checkpoint static mesh. And so we go in here, open it up, and we need to 
set collisions. I'm not going to create some fancy custom collisions and everything. We're just going to use complex as simple and be done with it. So now in our checkpoint, we already have it selected. Come in here, add component, ugly ass checkpoint, and we need to raise it up. Yes, we know that the. You know what? We'll fix it in just a minute. Next thing I gotta do is just add a component, box collision. And we just need to make it fit that opening. Close enough for government work. So as soon as we walk in there, compile and say we don't need the paint pad open. Um, what we want to do is we want to run, uh, yeah, save game. So inside here, we go to our event graph. We don't need any of you guys. Um, right click. Boom. Cast to player underscore base, which is my player character. Um, Chris, you did get the um, that simple multiplayer template. I've got a new version of it I need to upload, which is a 4.23 version. It appears that my... Um, you know, senility and age. Uh, the version that I had uploaded was um, not the correct version. <laughs> it was kind of missing something. So I have a corrected version I got to upload, and just remind me, and I'll I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, save game. There we go. That's all we're doing is we're saving our game. Poof. Um, and of course, I'm just one of those bozos. Um, play sound at location. I said the only sound I've added in here was my click sound. And we're just going to get... Um, get world location. Yeah, transform was the word I was looking for earlier. We could have used a transform for a location. That way it saves our orientation as well. Um, all right, so... Um, we don't need you anymore. We actually need my ugly-ass checkpoint. And... the map so we can actually look at it here and I don't know why let's compile and save again but whatever I'm just gonna put that in here and it's gonna ignore the player start location because it's automatically doing that. So if I do this, it didn't click. Um, oh, God, you're such an idiot. Oh. I need more coffee. Um, let's put you at zero zero zero, and I want to hit play. It's a zero zero zero. But if I come over here and I save the game, and I hit F two, it's going to go from here. But if I go through here and somehow I die, I reload the game and I'm right back here again. I'm at my last known checkpoint. So. 
you could just use that generic checkpoint. You can make them different colors, different whatever. But I'm going to put a second one in there just for the hell of it. And remember, this is my checkpoint. The one dead square in the center. So now if I come over here, I completed this checkpoint. But then I come over here and I get killed. Boom. I restart. I'm at the correct waypoint. The one closer. So I'm going to go ahead and go back through here. So it saves my checkpoint. And now whenever I leave, let's save all, save selected. Let's go back to my other map. This is where it gets interesting. And what you can do as well is you can create a spawn point that's always going to work no matter what. So if I want my spawn point to be here and a little bit off the ground, I want to create a custom spawn point that's going to work no matter what. So blueprint, actor, spawn point. You can call them whatever you want. You can add multiple spawn points. I don't want you to be a plus. I want you to be an underline because of my OCD. So let's get rid of checkpoint. Spawn point. What do we want our spawn point to do? When we place this in our map, I'm actually going to put... Um, a plane just so we have something and let's make it red so we have our spawn point we can put this wherever we want in our map we can make it a sphere we can make it whatever um, turn off all the collisions um, turn off visibility if we want to. I'm going to leave it on for right now. But what we can do here is on event begin play, we won't need these. So event begin play, as soon as it loads the map up, um, huh, let's see here. I had it in my brain and calculated of how I was going to do this. Um, and there's probably about 15 different ways of doing it, and all of them are probably better than what I'm going to do here. So, spawn point, event begin play, um, let me just give it a, a quick try. Cast to player underscore base. And get player character. I'm just spitballing at this point, just to finish off the hour. Um, we're going to need to get a reference to you because we're going to need your location. Get world transform. Um, you know what? No. Let's just keep it simple. Get world location. And we need to override everything. Um, and this should be probably done in the map itself. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I'll come back to the actual spawn point itself later. Let's actually, for right now, let's put this in the open level blueprints. And event begin play. We need to basically run the save game check. Actually, No, I just want to force it to ignore that. I just want it to set my location to, um, since right now my spawn point 
yeah, it's probably not going to do anything. So I can take that spawn point, and I'm going to put that into the map here. I'm going to call it negative 750, and normally 120 is going to get you, for the UE4 mannequin, the right height above ground. I'm just going to go ahead and put 150. So I can actually take this information right here and copy it by right-clicking on the location and come in here and cast to player underscore base and we want to get player character and yes I'm sitting here worrying about how it's, it's going to look um, set actor location damn won't let me pin it um, well, a new location is just just going to be negative 750, 150. Probably not the best way to work. This. No, it, it should have put me right here. That's because the, uh, the player itself, whenever it spawns in, it's actually going to set the save game information. This is where it's, it's confusing when you're trying to do a, a test map or something like this. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to delete this for now. It's just not going to work on my test map, in other words. So now if I come back over here and go to my actual single player map, and hit play. See now it screwed me all up. It's messed with my save game information. So if that happens and you get screwed up and now whenever I hit play, oh I'm stuck, I can't move. Um, well what happens if I load my save game? Well I'm still stuck right here. How are you going to reset that? Um, the easiest way to do that is going into your actual project file. Go ahead and make sure you do a save all. Make sure everything is saved. Um, go into your actual project files. Documents, Unreal Projects. And we're not in that one. What are we in? Why is that one open? Unreal Projects, we are in template. saved. You've got auto saves, backup, collection. You know, worst case scenario, you can come over here and just take that and delete it. Yes, it's open. Um, save games. You can actually delete that. And it's going to bring you back into the normal default start location you're just deleting your save game so now if we come back in here oh, we've taken some health damage um, let's go ahead and save our game and let's take some more health damage and what happens now if we die we do our death sequence and then we respond back to where we saved our game. So if you do get stuck where that's a problem and your save game issues are, are screwing you up back and forth, that's all you got to do is go into your project files itself. See, it recreated a new one because I created a new save game. And again, let's hit play. We can see we've lost some health. And let's save the game. Go back over here. We see that save game works. We're going to escape. 
go to our project files delete our default underscore save which is what I called my save game so now whenever I hit play it spawned me back at normal default I, I'm it will kill your save game but it'll fix you from having an issue of being stuck in the world and there was much rejoicing all right is there any questions on that it's a lot simpler than than what it has to be by simply creating a save game custom event and the save game check and also a manual load save game by having these configured whenever you first start playing the game there is no save game at all so we either need to create our own manual save game point or an automatic save game point however you want to implement it but all you have to do is create the save game create save game object and said so the first thing I did whenever I was doing this um, you right click blueprint class and it, normally it's like this but just click on all classes and type in save and there you go save game and then whenever you do that you give it a name I gave mine the name of default save game or default underscore SG any variable that you need to save in your save game needs to be in here I'm just saving my health and my location so I named them SG underscore health SG underscore location so that I know that they are a save game name of that variable because it can get kind of confusing whenever you're talking about health and health and health and health and health what which ones which so if I just see health I know that's my player health so whenever I save game create save game object for my default save game which is called default underscore SG or whatever you called it um, I promoted that to a variable by just doing that because later on I may want to just pull this not using it right now but I may want to pull a reference to it and instead of whatever I can just pull this up and get that data but anyway I'm not using it but you may find a use for it later so go ahead and, and make that variable I'm getting a reference to my health remember we're on save game I'm getting a reference to my health at the time that I'm saving my game and I am setting my save game health to whatever that health is I'm getting my actors current location and I'm saving that or setting that as my save game location as in my physical world location and then I created a variable called save game name and default save that's the name of my save game oh I don't have it in, I, I already deleted it um, so if I come in here and hit play and I save my game game save stupid and then I exit it's automatically created a default save it's created what I told it to save it as in this variable I could actually change that name now and instead of default save I can say okay in my menu I want to save my game as a new save game and then have a menu to where I can select which save game that I want I'll have multiple save games um, if I hit the escape key and add an option in save game does save game exist no oh well then provide me with a name and it gives me the input and then it sets that variable here to save game name and you see you can go a different route and manually save your save game as a different name <coughs> we're just giving it a default save so we can actually change this to default save game name or whatever you know you can get as complicated and as cool as you want but all we're doing is save game to slot and there we go and it's going to save the, the game to whatever is in this variable name right here I can change this to monkey penis 
it doesn't matter if it's for client or for server at this point because it's actually working on the individual player because it's actually a player based event so get your player character it's it's separate from client and server it's individual so if you're a client and I'm a server um, what I'll we'll have to look at is I will try to implement this into a multiplayer environment and I will make another video to see if there's any changes I don't really see where this would be a problem between client and server because when we're actually doing these it's actually like my, my checkpoint it's saving the game yeah I sound like a damn old person with a whistle when I talk now um, it's actually running this component right here save game it is not replicated um, so whether or not that's going to be a problem or not what I'll have to do is I will create a another project that will just be and unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to test it because I've only got one Steam account and all that kind of stuff but um, it can only be logged into Steam with one account at a time on one PC I don't have multiple PCs well I do but they're garbage compared to this one but um so I can make that available for testing with you on this um, I don't think it's gonna be a problem but what I'll do is with this save game system like this right here I'll create another base project and we'll package the project in a playable version and then you'll be able to, to join me in a game we'll be able to run around and I'll actually put multiple save points uh, like checkpoints where okay if I step on this red pad I'm saving but you walk over and you step on the blue pad and you save there okay now we can move off of there and if I hit the number one key or the number two key or whatever you know to reload the the save game then it should only move me not you the only difference is going to be whenever you're changing locations the location is where you're going to run into your issue um, you're getting your you're saving your location is no problem it's saving it to your save game the save game saves on your local host you're you're the client so whenever you do this it's saving that save game on your side whenever it comes to actually saving it on the server side that's a whole different ball game I haven't tried to do that yet but this is saving a save game file on your computer so the client has their own save game separate from what this, you know anybody else would have so if it was a dedicated server then every client that goes in there and saves their game is gonna have their own data in their save game itself yeah I mean does that that make sense though because you are saving it on your local computer for the the save game information it's gonna be called the same thing so that's when run into the um, thing of well we'll just one step at a time on that but I'll make a simple project um, to where it's a standalone playable separate game and it'll be very small download of course with my crappy internet it'll take me a while to upload but um, get in there run around and I'll, I'll put a clear this is a a blue save game point this is a red save game point and it's all gonna be based off of using my simple multiplayer steam template so that we'll be able to use steam as our base architecture for us to join in and be able to move around so um, it'll take me just a little while to do that I mean it doesn't take that long it takes probably take me longer to explain what the hell I'm talking about than to what I'm doing but I'll, I'll save that that system um, set up in there and we'll let you know whenever I get it finished I got about 15 other things to do whenever I get done with this so we're pretty much at a stopping point on this one we've got everything working the way that we need to and um, it all works but it's because we created our, our load save game and our save game custom events and can now call them whatever we need to so when we're in here playing, can run around, 
if things happen, you start losing health, and you want a manual save, manual save. Now, as I'm running around, if player gets killed, oh no, I'm dead. You go through your whole death sequence, your animations, and so forth, and then poof, you respawn. You're back at the same location because you had your save point. Um, same thing here. I'm going to take some more health off. Um, I'm going to save my game here, and then I'm going to run it back over here and die. I was low on health, but my last save point was over here with low health. Kind of sucks. I probably should have healed up before I, I, I went through that checkpoint. Now I can get back over here and heal back up again. Um, implementing the, um, the stuff is entirely up to, to how you want it to work, but I'll just make a um, game saved. So now if I load my game, it's always going to bring me back to where I need to. But I'll, I'll make a good demo. And, um, um, yeah, this simple setup should integrate easily. Um, I'm actually going to save everything and close this down. Um, I got a few things to take care of, but I'll try to get that knocked out this evening, and I'll, I'll do a, a test project. Um, I don't think I've got anywhere uploaded the, um, the survival game kit with my multiplayer. I don't know. I'll look really quickly. It's an older version. And as I was saying, they never got with me about setting up my stuff with their stuff. So, you know what? You know, I'm not going to beg someone to go in together on a project or, you know, anything money making wise. Um, so, uh, I just left it alone. I removed almost everything to do with that project, I think. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this project down really quickly. Got everything saved on that one. And uh, it's easy for me to make another version of Survival Demo. I believe this was it. Um, All right, so um, single player. I know I tested this in multiplayer when we actually run around. Um, takes a few seconds to load up. So you can see, like the all their stuff was was working. Water can do. Um, I changed names and stuff because that kind of pissed me off too. Um, yeah, this isn't the correct version. It's saying pick up 1911. That's a freaking Beretta M9. So, yeah, you can see that that was there. I don't... I, there was a lot of things that kind of annoyed me on this, this uh, project. Um, Like that. Oh well, you know, you got to manually reload. Okay, I understand. Um, the different modes. There's a lot of cool stuff in the in in their template. I, it's kind of hard to tell with the stereo sound. I'm pointing this way. The sound is spawning from zero 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 location. So their sound attenuation was really crap. <laughs> I went through and I fixed a lot of things. Like When you look at it, it's not a freaking 1911, it's an M9. Um, and fixed naming things and pickups and hell, I don't remember what the hell a key was for, for building. Um, inventory, let's see. Repair, um, remove stock, remove magazine. I don't remember. Um, you can, yeah, you drop the items on there. 
I said there's a lot of cool stuff. Like just crafting and, and everything. So I mean Like I said, that, that sound attenuation really bugs the problem. It's some silencer, right? What the hell was the build key? Tab is my thing here. Oh, you had to have the um the blueprint. Um and we'll mess around with adding new items and stuff like that too. Uh what the hell was the build key? Select the blueprint, and there was a... I don't remember what the hell the key was. There we go. Uh, F key. Ah, shit. Um... Yeah, I don't remember. But, um... I never did a, um, a full load save system in this. Um... With it being this way, what I'm assuming is for it to be a persistent world-wise, then the server itself is going to be the one that has to store the information, and the client is going to have to load what's currently on the map but yeah give me give me a little bit to actually think about that um because when you're you're doing that in peer-to-peer -peer, which is what mine is set up to be if i'm a server you're the client if, if you're the server i'm the client um it's not a dedicated server system uh Connecting to a dedicated server is something totally different. You know, not totally different, but it is different from, from what my setup is, is done as. Um, it was meant as a peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, so you could always host your own multiplayer game. You know, as long as Steam's alive. Unfortunately, there are ways of fixing it where you don't need Steam, but unfortunately, you lose a lot of the, the extra stuff. But... Um, yeah, let me get another cup of coffee and think about that. Uh, but I think, though, that um, what needs to happen is a system in place to where when something is being placed, their placement works in multiplayer. Yeah, um... As far as I remember, whenever I played this with other people, um, what was happening was if I was already set, a, set up as a, to play that game, what is the, do I have this packed up still? It's survival demo. Um, I don't remember. Survival demo, 483 megabytes. Um, packed up in a RAR file. Um, I will check to see if I've already got it uploaded to uh, Google Drive. If I do... Oh, God, I hate frickin' notifications! I swear to God, if they don't quit using the frickin' everyone on that damn server, I'm gonna leave that frickin' thing. Um... I will check to see if I've got um, the survival demo that I put together already on Google Drive. I may have already deleted it. And um, yeah, um, essentially with that, what you've got to do is whenever the client is connecting, they need to get the current updated version of the world. 
for it to see. So what I'm assuming is uh, it needs to verify the save game of it's got a it's got to force save whenever a client joins. It's got to force save the server's client, the server's um, version of the world. And then once it saves the server's version of the world, then it needs to then load that. But then it can't just be a save game at that point. So then it's something totally. Like I said, I need to just run it as a test and see if that's going to work because when the client joins they need to have um, recognition of what the server says is there because if I put together a building you need to be able to see that building and we could see each other when we I know that when we played multiplayer with uh, some of the guys there was a couple of us in there running around putting together our own little forts in that little tiny small map and uh you know, shooting each other's walls down and crap like that. I mean, so we could interact with all that. That was no problem. But let me check with that, and if so, then I'll get you the link, and then um, you can join me in a game. Uh, freaking Streamlabs sucks. Um, you can join me in a game, and we can test it, see what it looks like. That way, um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm gonna have some coffee and, and take a break for a little bit. I got family issues to take care of, so I'll be back shortly, and I'll be on Discord if anybody has questions. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.